When we go to heaven, will we sit on clouds, strum our harps and sing hallelujah all day long? <laughs> I don't think so. Hi, I'm Hans Wilhelm, and today I'm undertaking the daunting task to share with you some impressions of heaven, our true homeland from where we once came and to where we will also return. The problem is that heaven, the absolute reality, is seven-dimensional and therefore almost impossible for our limited three-dimensional human mind to grasp and to imagine and for me to illustrate. However, for ages, many seers, prophets and divine spirit beings from the pure heaven have given us glimpses about this reality in numerous revelations and books. They have found ways to translate that reality into words that we can grasp and understand. And I will share some of their descriptions in this video. When we look at our material universe with its trillion of galaxies, stars and planets, we are at awe about the magnificence and sheer size of it all. But the spiritual world tells us that in comparison to the divine heavens, our material universe is comparable to a grain of sand in the desert. That is how tiny our known universe is and how unimaginably immense our true homeland is. I personally find that very humbling. This infinite absolute reality is created out of radiant light ether or consciousness and consists of seven basic heavens with their prismatic suns. Into each heaven shine all the other heavens in their own unique color and they are circulating around the energy-giving primordial central sun or light force. And every time these heavens approach this central sun on the elliptical path, more divine spiritual sun systems are developing in that heaven. All these heavens consist of innumerable suns and planets teeming with life, because everything is alive. There are heavenly structures, beautiful dwellings in magnificent gardens. An immense variety of splendid flowers bloom in meadows and valleys with brooks and trees and shrubberies. Countless manifestations out of pure consciousness. And all of it is self-luminous, shining of itself. That's why I can't really illustrate it. The teaching angel Leo Bani from the Pure Heavens tells us, in the eternal being, everything is self-luminous because the eternal light radiates through all suns and planets, all spirit beings, animals, plants and minerals. Every state of consciousness of minerals, grasses, flowers, plants and animals radiates its light of consciousness. This results in the mighty all communication, a radiant network that knows no limit. Because everything is in all things and every consciousness is self-luminous, infinity is one great light garden of God. Through the divine principle of openness and unity, everything radiates in turn throughout all things, the smallest the greatest and the greatest the smallest. For this reason, in the eternal being there is no above and below, no right and left, no back and from, no here and there. All suns and planets in all heavenly planes are in constant harmonious movement. Every heavenly plane has its characteristics in terms of sound, color, form and fragrance. And all spirit beings on these planets are living in total harmony and unity with all animals and other life forms. The Swedish mystic Emanuel Swedenborg so famously observed, This I can declare, things that are in heaven are more real than things that are in the world. These ever-expanding and evolving heavens with their constant birthing of new planets are very busy places. The divine spirit beings are very active in the maintenance, evolution and extension of creation. They have a deep and inner communication with God, our loving Father, and take total responsibility for what they have created. In my video all about animals we can see that the constant divine evolutionary process is taking place in the pure heavens and not here on earth. Every life form that gradually develops into a nature being starts its journey of becoming 
as one of the spiritual atoms, fertilized by the all radiation in the developing spiritual particle. Over eons of light cycles, this spiritual particle evolves in rhythmic waves to the mineral, the plant and animal kingdom, to a nature being. We also know them as elemental being. When this nature being has matured, it is taken on or adopted by a pair of male and female spirit beings, also called a dual. Through a merging process of this dual pair, this nature being becomes a child of God and with the guidance and teachings by the parent and teaching angels will grow in wisdom and radiance. It becomes an absolute perfect energy body which corresponds to the universe and thus bears perfection in itself. Each divine being, also known as angelic being, also has a unique mentality and abilities which we can vaguely compare to our talents or occupation, through which they will be active in the kingdom of God, the ever-expanding creation. Being unconditional, unlimited, all-inclusive, selfless love, these perfect, radiant beings are able to express their true love nature, their mentality and abilities in service to the all which creates the utter fulfillment, joy and bliss that we can find in heaven. The law of God is selfless service. They know the highest form of love is service. The highest evolved life forms serve the lower evolved life forms, and the lower evolved life forms serve the higher evolved life forms. The circle of love. But it is not all work and service. In the book The Inner Path Level of Order, the cherub of divine wisdom from the pure heavens reminds us via Gabriele. Be of good cheer. It is not so serious in the eternal home as some of you may think. We too adorn ourselves in honor of the Father. All pure being created by God is beautiful and self-luminous from within. And so is every spirit being. Everything pure is self-luminous. Moreover, the beautiful raiments of the spirit beings and the soft, noble, fine jewelry are indicative of spiritual life. For in the kingdom of God, the fullness is manifest and accessible to all. Both the male and the female spirit beings wear long flowing robes. They also wear delicate jewelry. In the eternal being, in your home and ours, there are also celebrations of love. The spirit beings come together for harmonious games and gatherings. They create round dances and hear the gentle sounds performed by spirit beings on their instruments. It may be difficult for us to believe that we have also once been such a perfect, radiant, angelic being. Through our self-will or ego-will, or what is generally called the fall, we have removed ourselves and burdened ourselves with negative energies. For us to be part of this divine heaven again requires that we free ourselves from these negative energies, also called karma or soul burdens. Therefore, the mystical spiritual path back home is also called the path of freedom. Through self-recognition, repentance and clearing up and no longer committing those negative aspects that the person has recognized in himself. And with the help of the Christ power within, we ascend and be attracted to higher spheres and eventually return back to our true homeland, to heaven, where our spiritual families will joyfully welcome us. We need to remember that the celestial realm is the highest frequency vibration of consciousness and is, as we have heard, in everything. The entire universe is in the smallest particle. That is what Christ meant when he reminded us that the kingdom of God is within each one of us. Let me emphasize again, I have no interest in convincing anybody about the reality of heaven. Your inner guidance will tell you if that what the divine world have shared with us sounds true for you or not. For anybody interested to read more about what Leo Bani and the Cherub of Divine Wisdom shared with us, you can find links to these books beneath this video. Please don't forget to subscribe and we will meet again in my next video. Until then, thank you and goodbye.